dear Professor Tao, dear Dr. Learn, dear Dr. Wong, Henry, other faculty members of the business and economics, and dear students of the Beta Gamma Sigma Hong Kong U chapter. It's a tremendous honor for me to be here tonight accepting the chapter honorary title from the BGS Hong Kong U chapter. BGS is a very prestigious international honor society, so exclusive that I did not even have the chance of being inducted into the society when I was a business school student many years ago. So I feel very honored to be invited here today. So looking at many of the young, energetic, and beautiful faces, I see dreams and I see hopes. We are living in a time of great technological changes, as Henry no doubt will tell us more about it later. I think it's very, very exciting out there for you to explore. In this part of the world, let's say, I think the sky is the limit in terms of opportunities for talented, ambitious young people. So about myself, ever since childhood, I've always been what I would call a closet rebel. So I did not like to bend to rules, I do not like conventions, and I did not like to ask for advice. So I took delight in defying expectations to comply to anything, particularly from authoritative figures. And I have succeeded in making quite a few people very exasperated, ranging from my parents to teachers to colleagues. Now at a more mature age, while I've learned the importance of asking for advice from wiser and more experienced people, on the whole I generally shy away from giving advice of any sort to young people. My own career path has been unusual in some ways and meandering, and I certainly don't think that's the right thing to recommend to anyone. So instead of sharing any career tips or advice with you, I will just talk about the three stages of my life that I went through between my 20s and now in my 40s, and what I learned personally from looking back. So I will call the first stage experiment. The second stage, grit. And the third stage, which is now, is about radiation. So for my first stage, experiment. So I may be exaggerating a bit, but only just a bit, to say that probably up to my late 20s, I was really not focused on building my career at all, probably contrary to many of you. I've always been a pretty decent student, and I did well in my first job at Procter & Gamble, so good enough to get a lot of opportunities in exciting projects and going abroad for some overseas assignments. But to be honest, I wasn't very bent on building any career. So after Procter & Gamble, I went to further studies without knowing, frankly, in advance what to do with these extra degrees. So my energy during that time was really about experimenting and go into things that are exciting, interesting, and nobody thought I should do, like getting a PhD. For me, there was a time to learn new things, to know people, to enjoy things that is frankly particularly sweet when you are young, like dating. So looking back, it was a time, great time for experimentation, without frankly specific goals in mind. So what is very interesting for me to note when looking back when I was much older, is sometimes how the dots connect again years later about what you were just experimenting turned out to be actually quite relevant experience some years later. So one of the major projects, for example, I was involved in when I was at Procter was about the post-merger integration of two companies of very, very different culture. One is Procter & Gamble, the other one is Max Factor. And without going into details, I think such intimate experience of dealing with things like people and structures and operations in a highly sensitive and volatile environment, which is a post-merger situation, turns out to be very relevant and useful many years later. Now let's move on to the second stage. Interestingly, I call it GRIT, G-R-I-T. I joined McKinsey when I just turned 30, which is a very late stage, late age for joining McKinsey for the firm standard. So I had a pretty rough time actually, beginning. Uh, I still remember when I first got you know, on my first engagement, I was introduced to my manager, 
and his way was greeting me was, I've seen many PhD fail in this firm. That was his hello, yeah. So as I learned over time, um, people were not out there to be nasty, to make you feel bad. But the culture in the firm was swim or sink. And unless you are proven smart, you are automatically classified as dumb, right? Now, I think the culture of consulting firm, not just in McKinsey, but many others, is have matured and sort of softened and becoming more people-oriented since then, which is very good. Certainly, during my time there, there were quite a few moments when I think my f mental, <laughs> intellectual, and physical strength was really, really tested. So I don't know how many of you have come across this book called Grit by Professor Duckworth that came out about two years ago. I really like that book. It summarizes things really, really well. Because she talks, she talks about two things. Passion is a key ingredient for success, but one really needs resilience and at some point physical endurance on a sustained basis to really get the essence. Now, there were moments when one would fall down. Actually, looking back, it doesn't matter why you fell, and it doesn't matter when you fell. I think what matters much more is how and where you get back up. Yeah, And that's what I learned during those tough years in consulting. So I stayed for about 13 years in McKinsey. Um, and I left the consulting world, entering my the third stage, which I would call radiation, when I was in my early 40s. Now, in my 40s now, in this third stage, I'm keenly aware that my success is very much built on other people's success. There's another book that I would like to um, mention, which is called Collective Genius. I don't know how many of you have read that. It's also like just a couple of years ago it came out. And through a lot of research, the authors describes the importance of leading innovations in a company. Contrary to the myth, a lot of times innovation is not about a singular person's genius, cleverness, or vision, but is really much more about how to harness the creativity and the hard work from everyone effectively. So it's not so much about what I do, but about how far we go about getting the company working together, and our ability to attract, retain, and excite our people, that matters much more. So as you probably know, telecom is an incredibly competitive industry in Hong Kong. It is way over 100% in penetration, and it's very cutthroat in the competition. But precisely because it's so tough, we really need smart people. Otherwise, we can't innovate, and we can't come up with great products or services and branding that differentiate ourselves. So for me, creating effective entrepreneurship, which is crafting a startup culture within our own company, is a critical mission not only for the business purpose, but particularly for talent management purpose. For example, some of you may have heard about Ziao Liu, which is Birdie. Birdie is a pure digital brand that and a travel card program, so that the two, so Birdie Mobile and Birdie Travel, that we have created in the last uh, year and a half. Our team has done tremendous research of quite a few digital brands around the world, learn from their experience, and come up with a Hong Kong version with unique characteristics that will appeal to millennials and young at heart, like yourselves. For the team, it has been a really tough and incredible experience. That is very unique because you are building a brand new business from scratch, but you are shielded in large part from painful things like fundraising. They do need to deal with critical and demanding people like myself to get the money, but on the whole, they can really focus on business building. Creating the right healthy, competitive environments for Birdie and Smartphone simultaneously, for me, is the foundation of our success, and I own my own success to the collective efforts of our teams. So let me stop here before I carry on and on. May I just share with you, last but not least, a quote that I like very much from the Nobel laureate and the famous Irish playwright, George Bernard Shaw. 
Some see things as they are and ask why. Others dream things that never were and ask why not. I hope your journeys will be marked with great discoveries and wonders. Thank you very much. Thank you.